Michael's Angel 73 says, do you ever check your comments? I need help. I go through phases of checking comments. So usually I'll post a video and then I'll kind of check the comments for a couple of days, see what's going on. Generally the only negative comments I'll get are from people who are trying to figure something out and it's just not clicking. So I do check my comments. And for this video specifically, I went to my biggest video that I've ever gotten the most views on, which is my how to knit for beginners video that I did about three years ago. It's about to hit 7 million views, which is, ugh, I can't even think about it. It's just kind of bizarre, but um, it's my most popular one. It has the most comments, obviously. And a lot of the comments are questions about knitting. So I went through that video specifically and pulled out kind of the most common questions that I see people ask in there and I wanted to answer them. So I get a lot of questions about my cast on method that I show in this video. So some people just say, what's that cast on? Um, Haiti says, I'm a complete beginner and I'm wondering why your cast on is so easy. Why do people make it so complicated? Um, to which Brock replied, this is all three years ago, which is kind of, it's kind of funny to see like, what were you doing three years ago? Did you think somebody was going to read your comment three years later? Um, so I, I, hopefully she's gotten an answer from somebody. Um, Brock went ahead and replied to her directly and he said, people use more complicated cast-ons because this cast-on, though the simplest, is also the hardest to knit into. It makes a messy edge and causes a lot of problems. I can guarantee that after you learn to knit, you will never use that cast-on again. And I actually agree with Brock here. Um, and I, you know, it's kind of a, it was a big debate in my head when I was doing this video. Um, do I do, do I show a long tail cast on or do you just keep it plain and simple? The good thing about the simple cast on is that you are literally just doing the loop, putting it on the needle, doing the loop, putting it on the needle. Um, and it's super quick, easy, painless. The problem with it though, is when you knit that first row, it's a little bit tricky and it can be really tight to pick up those first stitches, which can be kind of, I guess, intimidating, but you have to balance that against a more complicated cast on like a long tail cast on, which is for a beginner, a much more complicated process of having to do the little slingshot method, go around the thumb, go around the index finger and pick up your stitches that way. So do you show them a more complicated cast on first, but make it an easier experience going forward? Cause it's that first row that you knit off of the long tail cast on. It's very, quick and simple, it's very easy. And you don't have that tightness problem. Um, do you do that? Or do you just show them a simple cast on method and that first row is kind of tricky and frustrating and, and sticky, which I mean, there's no really an easy answer for that. Also, uh, speaking of cast on methods, Val Hoff says, hi Ryan, why did you choose this method to cast on versus the long tail method? I'm totally new to this and absorbing everything I can. You're such a good teacher. Well, thank you very much. Um, like I said, it's just, you know, you have to decide if you want to show them the easy way that is actually a little harder once you get started and it is a little bit messier of an edge, or do you show them the hard way and you, you run the risk of them kind of giving up before they've gotten started. So that's kind of why I did that. I do prefer, a long tail method. If I'm doing a project for myself, I'll usually do a long tail cast on or something that's a little more complicated depending on the project. D says, okay, dumb question. What is the benefit of using a shorter double point needle as opposed to a longer needle with a cap on the end? Because how do you keep your stitches from falling off of a double pointed needle? This is a very good question. Um, in the tutorial that I recorded, I used double pointed needles. Those, I think they were little golden metal ones. I only used those because they were smaller and they fit in, in the frame better than using like the full blown long knitting needles. So if it had worked conveniently for filming, I would have used the longer ones with the stopper on the end, I just used the double pointed ones because they were smaller. Typically you'll use double pointed needles like this one when you're doing a project in the round. So you'll have like four or five double pointed needles and you'll use that to knit a hat or mittens, gloves, socks, anything like that. 
If it's something that's laying flat, like a scarf or a blanket, then you'll use regular old kind of your standard knitting needles with, with the stoppers on the end. And then how you keep your stitches from falling off of a double pointed needle, you just have to be really paranoid <laughs> and really careful. Uh, many a project I've done where I'm knitting in the round and just going through my double pointed needles. And then I look and all of a sudden I've got five stitches that have fallen off and fallen apart. And it, I, I always kind of overstuff my double pointed needles. That's a good reason for using a circular knitting needle. If you have one, if you can get one, um, then that kind of solves that problem because they're not gonna fall off. Kevin says, could you give some suggestions for best knitting supplies for the beginner to get started? So I would say you just need knitting needles and some yarn. That's honestly all you need. In terms of stuff, first of all, invest in a nice thing to put all your, your knitting in. This is from Ikea. And I don't think I've ever actually gone through like brands that I use. So I guess I can kind of go through that. For yarn, I mean, yarn uh, kind of depends on, on the project. Synthetic is obviously bad for the environment. You should not use synthetic yarns. It is often cheap, but uh, it's honestly not that cheap. It's kind of, there's some wool brands that are pretty equal to the price of a synthetic anyway. So I always recommend you go for wool in your project or like a wool cotton blend, depending on, on what you're doing. Um, for your needles, I really like wooden needles. In my tutorials, I always used to use these metal needles that I think I got from like Walmart. Um, but they're very slippery and stitches can easily fall off them. Wooden needles are a little more sturdy and the stitches aren't gonna fall off them quite as easily. Uh, it also just kind of depends if you've got sweaty hands. My, my hands tend to sweat when I'm knitting. Um, stuff gets sticky and I don't know. So get a couple different sizes of, of knitting needles. I'd say like five millimeter or larger. Um, and then obviously get yarn that matches. So you can usually read on most brands of yarn. They'll have instructions and say which size of needle goes best with that yarn. I would stick with like a chunky type of yarn that's great for the beginners because it's not going to fall apart as easily and it's also because it's so big it, it, the project is going to grow faster so you'll see more results and you'll kind of like get addicted to that kind of you know seeing the finished product. Tarone or Tarone, Tarone says what's the best needle for beginners? So going off of you know beginner tip stuff I will say um, you know wooden needles, metal needle, needles, doesn't really matter. Once you are knitting in the round, get yourself some nice double pointed needles. So these are just wooden ones. I think I got them from a craft store. I, I, I don't remember the brand, some off brand, probably something you could just find on Amazon, to be honest. Um, it's just wood, wood sticks. I've got a lot of them in every different size. So I've got those. And then everybody has probably seen these red circular knitting needles. Brand is Chiago, Chiago. They are just great. Um, they've never broken on me. I've got a couple different sizes um, and different lengths as well. And they're just, they're great. They're really well, they're, they're metal and the wire connecting the two needles is really strong and sturdy. And I've knit blankets, sweaters on these and I've never had a pair break on mine. Um, every other brand that I've tried to use has like broken at the edge here. You kind of get like a little crispy edge on some of them and it eventually breaks off. So Chiagu is this brand. They're great. They have all sorts of different sizes and you can find them anywhere online. JS asks, is synthetic yarn easier to use for beginners? I'm using cotton and going bonkers. I will say that whatever type of yarn you use, um, you're going to get used to it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think, you know, certain fibers have different feels to them, but generally they're all kind of the same. Um, and honestly, the, the thing that is easiest for you is just what you're going to be spending the most time with. So if you knit a big project using one type of yarn, eventually by the end of the project, you're probably going to be most comfortable with that material. So I would just stick with it and, and get used to it.
Sam asks, what would you do if you wanted to make it wider than the needles, like a blanket? So um, get a lot of questions about asking about making blankets or baby blankets. It also, it, there's, there's definitely cycles of, of the comments. I get a lot of questions asked. There's a time when a lot of people asked me, uh, they were talking about the Harry Styles sweater that he wore at a concert. And so there were a whole bunch of Harry Styles fans that were trying to figure out how to knit that sweater specifically. Uh, um, but most common question I get is, is how to make a blanket or something like that. Um, <laughs> you could get really long knitting needles. I think that's what everyone's mind kind of goes to, like shoving a bunch of, of stitches on just the biggest, longest knitting needles you can find. Um, another option is to get a circular knitting needle and knit the blanket using the magic loop. So if I was going to use this, I think you could knit a blanket on this. I think it's long enough. This would be the length of the full knitting needle if you were knitting a blanket on this. So you could probably squeeze a bunch of stitches on here and you could make a pretty decent sized blanket with just these needles. To knit it, it would not be in the round. So you would be knitting it using the magic loop method, which essentially turns a circular knitting needle into one giant knitting needle. Um, I've got a couple videos on magic loop, um, which I'll have down below in the description. Garrick asks, how fast can you knit? So this is a controversial question. I'm always, always advocated that knitting should be a sport in the Olympics because you know, it's about endurance and um, that's about it. Bad posture. So I'm going to assume the first row post casting on is my starting line. So we're going to do a minute. I'll start my timer and see how many stitches I can knit. Um, it's probably not going to be a lot because I mean, I'm actually not that fast. So one minute and counting. Uh, here we go. Um, Already, I know I'm not doing well because I'm, <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm doing a video and my hands are sweating already. I'm, I'm not doing a video has already made me tense and overheated. So this is this is not optimal conditions. You hear that? It's very very squeaky. Next row, and I'm got 10 seconds left. Ooh. Gosh. So I can knit 21 stitches per minute on five millimeter double pointed wooden needles with 100% merino wool. McNon asks, why is mine so tight? So this is another really common question I get, especially for beginners. And I just have to tell you just to remember to loosen it up. If you're finding that your stitches are way too tight, then just try to space your fingers apart. You're probably holding your project too close to the ends. So try moving your fingers back an inch and just kind of space stuff out, space your stitches out and just kind of take a breather, crack your knuckles, and just kind of be a little more intentional with maintaining a looseness. Same thing if your stitches are too loose, then just try to think about tension. Maybe the, the way that you're holding the yarn is, is causing it to be too loose or too tight. Um, so just try different methods of holding the yarn. There's, there's really no right or wrong way to, to hold the needles and the yarn. So some people will like hold their needles and then they'll wrap the yarn around like their pinky or a different finger and that just kind of helps moderate the tension. Going off of the tightness and, and looseness situation, a uh, cloud named Sammy asks, can anyone please explain to me why my stitches are always so loose? And the yarn distance between the two needles always seems to get looser and looser and become long as heck. I'm advanced intermediate in crochet and just trying out knitting. I would love some help, please. I thought this was interesting because I have tried crochet a couple of times. I've never quite 
clicked with it. I never got comfortable with it because it just felt too loose. So it might be a crochet thing that's transferring over into, into your knitting. So I don't know, just again, think about tension, think about how you're holding your needles. And I think knitting is, it has a little bit more structure than crochet and it's a lot less kind of loose and free flowing. So I think you'll, you're probably just bringing some of that crochet instinct to the table. So just kind of think about tightening things up a little bit, but not obviously not too much. There's a very, very fine line between too loose or too tight. D asks, what do you do if the yarn is too tight to move the needle under the loop the second time? So I think what you're asking is your project is so tight that you can't pick up that loop or you can't pull it under the next one. So what you can do is you can take a knitting needle that's either the same size or smaller if, if the same size is not fitting in there and just without planning on picking up that stitch, just stick your needle in there and kind of wiggle it around a little bit. That kind of loosens things up a bit. That usually helps with me. Um, I run into that often sometimes. Just grab another needle, put it in there and, and give it a couple shakes and hopefully it'll loosen it up a little bit. Guess who asked, what if the string between the two needles keeps getting longer? Advice. This is something that I didn't really pay attention to this question, but then I saw a couple other ones that were a little bit similar. So um, Mel asked, kind of going off of this, how do I move to the second one? Wait, it goes on the left needle, I'm so confused. And then Gabrielle asked, okay, but who else gets a long loop that won't go away after finishing the first row of stitches? Just me, I'm getting so frustrated. So I think what is happening is I think some people they're knitting. So you have to think about knitting. I think about it as kind of like a typewriter. So it goes, you're, you knit, 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 knit to the end. And I think they're not flipping their work around. So when you knit that first row of stitches, going all the way across, knitting, 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 and uh, you, there's, I guess there's maybe the thought of going back to the start. So you just go back to the start and knit, 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 and you're not flipping the work around. So what you need to do is you knit your first row and then you need to turn your work around and you've got your working yarn here now and then you just knit to the end of that one and then you flip it around again. Knit to the end, flip it around, knit to the end, flip it around. So you don't go back and forth like this. You go kind of in a circular motion, I guess. So when you're knitting, it's good to think of, um, you'll probably see this in patterns a lot when they say there's a front side or a back side or a, a right side and a wrong side. This concept will make more sense once you learn how to purl because you've, if you're just doing regular knit stitch on both sides, you're gonna build up a type of fabric that looks the same on both sides. But once you learn how to knit and purl, then you'll be able to see the difference between the two different sides. So I recommend you stick with it, learn a couple more techniques and slowly it will um, fix itself. But the main thing is when you get to the end of the row, make sure you remember to turn the work around. Rena asks, can I have your IG handle? Thanks. RJ Colette at RJ Colette is my Instagram. Um, there's there's not a lot of knitting on there, just pictures. Rena asks, what happens if I miss a loop? Um, pick it back up, get a crochet needle or get a smaller needle and you just have to pick up that stitch that dropped and then slowly build it back up. Depending on how many levels it dropped, you, hopefully it's just one and you can just put it back on. But sometimes you have to do a little um, amateur crochet work to, to pull it back up. Amanda asks, is this English or continental? In this beginner's tutorial video, I was showing English style just because it's kind of easiest to show exactly where the yarn is going, where the needles are going. But normally when I'm doing a project on my own, I'll switch between the two, depending on the situation, depending on the project, where my hands are situated. So usually I switch between English or continental. There's really, I don't have a preference. I think they're both effective. Judy asks, do you have a written pattern? 
I've thought of um, selling patterns or posting them on my website uh, or getting like a Ravelry account, but I, I honestly, I've never really like designed a project that I thought was, you know, unique enough to create my own pattern. A lot of knitting, ultimately at the end of the day, I always say it's, it's just arts and crafts. You're just picking bits and pieces of, of different techniques and methods and seeing what fits and, and creating your own kind of project. If I ever did a pattern that I was really proud of, I'd, I'd probably post it eventually. So I, I think someday I will start doing that, but not anytime soon. And also you've probably seen from many of my videos, I'm kind of just flying by the seat of my pants, just kind of pulling stuff together and seeing what works. And a lot of times stuff doesn't quite work out, um, but that's the beauty of, of knitting. And the last question that I get all the time is why is it so hard to knit? I don't know. It's really kind of um, crazy that it was ever even invented. Um, there was another comment that said like, who was the first person to knit? It's a very, very good question. I, I, I need to read up on the history of knitting. I think when you're learning to knit, it's, it's unlike anything that you would have done before. Like maybe you learned how to braid when you were a kid or I don't know, make like origami or something like that. So, it, I mean, any sort of craft project is is really unique in itself. And I think knitting is probably just kind of the height of that. So it's, it's gonna have things that are really complicated, but it's also got really kind of basic principles, just knitting, purling, combining them, um, knitting in the round. Once you learn those things, then it's really smooth sailing. So I would say it's, it's hard when you're first learning, but give it a day or two <laughs> and once it's you know committed to muscle memory and you, you your brain is kind of wrapped around the the principles that are that are going on ultimately it's just loops on top of loops on top of loops um, then it gets easy so those are my answers to all of the questions that I get on my most viewed video but I would just like to say thank you very much for watching and subscribing and supporting the channel. It is crazy that that video is about to hit 7 million. I kind of don't like to think about it and all the people that have like seen me. Most of the people probably only for a couple seconds and they, they probably found a better video. But if I happened to help you out with your knitting, um, that's great. And I'm, I'm happy that we can have that connection. So hopefully this video cleared up some questions that beginners often have, and I will see you next time. Also, if you're still watching this video, um, which you don't have to be because it is over, I'm just gonna remind you to buy my book, The Disassembly of Doreen Durand. It's my debut novel published by Sandstone Press. It's out in the UK, but um, there's a lot of different stores that ship it internationally as well. Um, one that I would recommend is Waterstones. They have great international shipping for small fee. It's also on Amazon, all the usual suspects. The book is, mm, has nothing to do with knitting. So <laughs> there's, unfortunately there's no crossover there. The book is about a woman who sees a terrible accident, but does nothing about it and runs away. Um, and there's kind of this little police cat and mouse game that happens. So there's a lot of mystery thriller elements, but it's also got some kind of surreal literary things going on as well. But most importantly, it's just kind of a beautiful book. It looks great on a bookshelf, looks great in bookshops, and it will look great on your Instagram grid when you buy it and you take a picture of it. But more importantly, when you read it and hopefully you enjoy it. And yeah, so I guess that's kind of my version of, of like and subscribe that, you know, you're supposed to do. Uh, but I guess it's buy and read. <laughs>